Hello everyone, it's Shannon here. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we are going to create this really fun interactive card that has a cascading bead effect. And I'm also going to share with you an idea to stretch the new Modern Neutrals paper pad. To create today's card, I'm going to be using the Harpy Birthday combo set, which comes with the stamp set and the matching die in the back. I'll also be using this new Modern Neutrals paper pad. This is one of the new pattern paper pads that just came out by Waffle Flower, and this is a beautiful kind of gray-toned, monotone sheet, great for some really subtle backgrounds. And like all the new paper pads, the dimensions are 8.5 by 5.5, so if you just cut a sheet in half, you get two A2 panels, which is pretty awesome. So I went and cut this sheet in half, and I'm now going to ink blend on one of the panels here with a couple of inks. I of course could use this panel as is, but I wanted to share with you an idea for stretching these beautiful papers in the modern neutral paper pad. Simply by ink blending over the paper, you can change it to whatever color you want, which I think is really awesome. I do recommend that you use dye inks. Here I'm using pink fresh inks. I started with sky blue and now I'm onto summer showers. And the reason why I recommend dye inks over opaque inks like pigment inks or distress oxides is because the dye inks will keep that print very crisp. The opaque inks have a tendency to kind of cloud it and you lose that beautiful print. Now that I finished ink blending, I went ahead and stamped two of these harps with the puppy in a Momento Tuxedo Black, and now I'm going to Copic color one of these. The Copic markers that I'm using are on screen so you can follow along. I'm starting with a group of yellows. I started with Y11, my lightest yellow. Now I'm on Y2, starting to add in some of my shadows. Once I finish that, I'll move on to my next yellow, which is Y15. This is kind of much more of a warmer yellow. And again, kind of going back over my shadows, and then I'm going to finish with Y23, my darkest shade of yellow. Once I've gone through all my shades, I'm going to work my way back through. So here I'm at Y15, now I'm doing Y02, and then I'll finish with Y11. And once I finish that, I'm going to color the rest of it off camera. And now, of course, I'm going to move on to the puppy. I have some light browns picked out. Started with my lightest shade again, which is E31, moved on to my medium shade, which is E33. And once I finish that, I'll go to my darkest shade, which is E35. And then once I finish my kind of rotation through all my colors, then I'll go back through with my medium, which is E33, and then finish with E31. And that creates just a nice blend. Now to finish up this little um, kind of crown, I'll have a couple greens, and then the flowers I'll color with a couple reds really quick. And once I finish that, my Copic coloring is all done. Now that my Copic coloring is done, I went ahead and die cut out the two stamped harps and puppies with the matching die. And as you can see, the die cuts out the string section of the harp, which is actually perfect for today's uh, project. I also die cut out of white craft foam that same dog and pup, and I'll use that later for some dimension. I also am going to quickly take a white gel pen here and just kind of color over the little remaining bits of string. This is definitely something you don't have to do, but I think it just has a cleaner, more polished look. And you can even do a second coat if you want to cover up that black ink a little bit better. Now on the uncopic colored harp, I'm going to draw with a mechanical pencil out the lines where the strings used to be. I'm going to draw them all the way out to the edge, the very edge or the very bottom or the very top of the harp. And after I've drawn out the strings, I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and just cut little slits all along those pencil lines that I drew. I don't want to cut all the way through. I want to stop just about like a quarter inch away from the opening where the strings were for the harp. And once I finish cutting all my little slits, I'll then put my harp aside and move on to uh, my string and beads. So here I have some kind of golden thread. I went ahead and already threaded a very thin needle with it, and now I'm going to add these gold seed beads to it. So I'm just going to take my needle and just kind of start picking up some of the seed beads and thread, get them onto my thread. I'm going to kind of get a lot on my thread here, about 70 to 80 seed beads. I don't need all of these, but I'd rather have more than I need and remove them later than have to try to get some more beads on here while I'm trying to string this all up. So I did add a little piece of tape to the end of my thread just so the beads don't slide off. And then I'm going to first take one, the other end, tuck it into one of the slits, grab a little piece of micro pore tape and place it on the end to kind of hold it in place. And then I'm going to grab or create a little section of beads here. It's about like 15 beads. 
and it doesn't have to be exact, <laughs> just a fair amount. And once I get the kind of section those beads off, I'll then move the other beads aside, then grab my string, wrap it, tuck it into the top slit, then wrap it around, tuck it into the next slit, the slit that's right next to it, and then again section off a, a, a section of beads, move the other beads I'm not using to the side, and then grab that in and tuck it into the slit directly below it, then wrap around the back, move, um, tuck it through the next slit, and then again make a section of beads, move the other beads aside. Basically I'm just repeating this process for all the slits. I end up here making only five strings even though I think I cut slits for six. You can definitely kind of wing it here. It doesn't have to be absolutely five or six strings, whatever you want. Once I got made my last string I then cut off. You can see me move all the leftover beads aside and now I'm just going to tape that last end to the back side of my harp and that completes all my strings. Now I'm just going to do like an extra securing here. I've cut again some more little pieces of micropore tape and I'm just going to place them on the front of my harp here holding the strings down in place. This is a good point where you can kind of fine tune the placement of your strings. You can use that tape to kind of secure the placement of your strings over a little bit if you find that your beads are kind of running into maybe the dog's nose or the part of the harp and it's kind of getting caught. You can kind of fine tune here. But this also keeps the beads in that harp area while you're working. So now that I've added some micropore tape to the tops of the strings to kind of hold them down, I'm going to go ahead and add some liquid glue all over this harp. And then I'm going to grab my Copic colored harp and place it directly on top, sandwiching those strings and micropore tape and just kind of really securing it. And that actually completes kind of our mechanism, which is pretty easy and pretty cool. So now that I have kind of my main element done, I'm going to use that to kind of help me figure out where I want my sentiment to go. This sentiment says Harpy Birthday. Of course, it's from the Harpy Birthday stamp set. I just positioned it, picked up my Misty, stamped it in Memento Tuxedo Black. And now I'm going to put this all together. The first thing I'm going to do is adhere this panel onto the front of an A2 top folding card base made from 110 pound white cardstock. I like to use liquid adhesive for that just to make sure I have a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that panel is perfectly aligned with the front of the card base. Now I'm going to glue our our bead cascade harp piece to the craft foam that we cut earlier. Again, I'm going to use liquid adhesive for that and just glue those two together. The dimension here just makes sure those beads really move freely and don't get kind of caught um, on the card front itself. And then I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back side of the craft foam and then just add this to the front of our card. Just turn it over here, kind of center it, and then I'm going to hold everything just for a second, just for a little bit for that glue to set. This Tombow Mono Multi-Liquid multi Adhesive does set pretty quickly. And here's the finished card. And I'll just give it a turn here, and as you can see, these beads move beautifully on the strings. I think it works really well with this harp image, a really fun, different kind of interactive card. And the techniques that I used here, you could really apply to whatever images you have. I hope you guys enjoy today's card and video. If you'd like any more information on the products I used, please check out the links below in the description. And if you like this video, I'd so appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.